Okay, so let's do a colligative properties example where we have 0 0.80 molar aqueous solutions made with each of the following compounds. So we have sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and glucose. And we're told that all of them are soluble. Now, which of these substances would elevate the boiling point the most and why? And which would depress the freezing point the least and why? So the way that we would tackle this problem, the first thing that we need to think about is that these are colligative properties of a solution. And colligative properties only depend on the relative concentration or the relative number of solute particles to solvent molecules in solution as opposed to what they are. In other words, it doesn't matter what the identity of those solutes are, it only depends on how many there, there are relative to the solvent or what their concentration is relative uh, to another solution. So let's go ahead and pick apart our solute substances first. So what we want to do is think about what happens to each one of these when we put it in water. So the first thing we want to identify the type of compound. Is it an ionic compound or is it a covalent compound because they are going to behave differently. And then how many particles will each formula unit break up into when we put the substance in aqueous solution. So let's look at sodium chloride first. Okay, now sodium chloride is an ionic substance. It's an electrolyte. So when we put it in water, it's going to dissolve into sodium cation and chloride anion. So each formula unit will dissolve into two particles. Okay, now magnesium chloride is also an ionic compound and magnesium chloride dissolves into magnesium cations plus two chloride anions. So each formula unit for magnesium chloride dissolves into three particles. Now what about glucose? Now if you look at the structure of glucose or this formula for glucose, you notice that everything is a nonmetal. So that tells us that this is a covalent compound. And covalently bonded molecules don't break up into pieces in solution. They're just solvated whole. So glucose, when dissolved in solution, is still glucose. It's just solvated. So we would call it aqueous. And so that means that each formula unit of glucose produces one particle in solution. All right, so now elevating boiling point. The higher the ratio of particles in solution to solvent, the more the boiling point is elevated. And so since magnesium chloride dissolves into three particles, we can say that the molarity of particles is three times 0 0.8 molar, so that's 2.4 molar. So that's one way of looking at it. Now this guy, it's two times 0 0.8, so that's 1.6 for sodium chloride, and this is still 0 0.80 molar. So the largest boiling point elevation is going to come from the highest concentration of particles. So that means magnesium chloride would cause the largest boiling point elevation. Okay, so now, which one of these would ele elevate the boiling point the least? And I know the question didn't ask that, but let's go ahead and answer. Well, if Magnesium chloride breaks up into three particles, sodium chloride breaks up into two, so that's intermediate, but glucose only breaks up into one, so we'd have the smallest boiling point elevation with glucose. Now what about the freezing point depression? So the higher the concentration of particles in solution, the more the freezing point is depressed. Now we're asked for which one would 
depress the freezing point the least. And so in that case, it would be glucose, since it only, it's still 0 0.80 molar in particles, so glucose would have the smallest effect on the freezing point, so the smallest freezing point depression. So sodium chloride would be intermediate for both of those. It would elevate the boiling point more than glucose in solution, but less than magnesium chloride, and it would depress the freezing point less than magnesium chloride, but more than glucose.